welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Too Many Chefs, an original story written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Too Many Chefs Once upon a time, in a busy kitchen in a busy city, a new almost chef was getting ready for her first night of work. Her name was Jay, and she had worked her way up at Moonstone's, her favorite restaurant, from a dishwasher to a bus girl to a chef's assistant, and now she was getting her shot at being a chef. A chef at Moonstone's! Jay could hardly believe it. As she pulled on her fresh new chef's coat, black and pressed and buttoned, she couldn't help but smile at herself in the mirror. She was nervous but she could do this. Let's get cooking, she said, and then headed out for her walk to work. Jay smiled and waved at her neighbors, but her mind was somewhere else entirely. It was worried and happy and whirling with all the ideas for new dinner specials and secret recipes and soon-to-be-famous dishes she'd make. But she was getting ahead of herself. Tonight, she had to cook a single dish for the head chef. If he liked it, she'd become a chef full-time. If he didn't, well, she would be an assistant for at least another six months. Jay shook her head. She knew she could make a dish so good it would knock the head chef's socks off, and maybe his shoes too, but what dish? What would be beautiful and unique and above all delicious enough to earn her a spot? Jay thought hard, and when she got to Moonstone's a few minutes later, she knew exactly what she wanted to focus on that night. Her family-famous sausage soup. Oh, it all clicked together perfectly in her mind. Some savory sausage, some fresh green spinach, a little tomato for acid and color, Plenty of fennel to emphasize the sausage and, and, and her mouth was watering already. Hey, everyone, she called into the back of the restaurant, and a few other chefs called out her name in greeting. The dinner rush had come early, and the kitchen was a mad blur of activity. People were kachunk chopping with heavy cleavers and babouche hammering with wooden mallets. They were vrr blending and shloop stirring and vashoosh, sending up clouds of hot steam when ingredients hit the pans. Over it all, there were shouts of behind and table nine and a distant radio tuned to some classic rock. It would be a wild, incomprehensible mess to most people, but to Jay, it was the beautiful music of the kitchen. Jay, called the head chef. His name was Elijah Plath, but in his kitchen, everyone just called him chef. Nice to see you in a chef's coat. You think you're ready to earn that spot tonight? I'm ready, chef, she said. I'm going to make you proud. Well then, he smiled. I can't wait to see it. I will be in the office tonight. I'd like to eat in two hours. Yes, chef. He went into his office to work on the menu, leaving Jay standing alone. She took a deep breath to center herself and then dove into the chaos. She claimed a station with a stovetop, set a timer for two hours, and started her prep. She got out some spicy sausage she had made the day before, some milder garlic sausage, onions and spinach and tomato and more. She oiled up her favorite stock pot and started cooking. The sausage was browned and broken up into good bite-sized pieces, and the onions went in, too, to start to soften. A sweet and spicy and savory steam drifted up, and Jay knew she was on to something good. She added the diced tomato and spinach and a healthy portion of fennel seed, and then a rich chicken stock, and set it to boiling. Jay let it cook, keeping one eye on it as she cleaned. When it seemed good, she poured herself a bowl to try and set it aside to cool. It must have smelled good, because the other chefs, the ones who had already passed the test, started nosing around her station. 
You're going for chef tonight? Asked Albert, who had worked in kitchens for nearly 30 years. Do you mind if I take a taste? That would be great, Jay said, fetching a wooden tasting spoon. I'm pretty nervous, but I think I have a good soup going. I'd love the feedback. Albert nodded and took a big taste. Hmm, he said, moving around his lips. Hmm. Well, Jay asked, nearly bursting. It's good, Albert said. But it needs a little more heat to go with that spicy sausage. Here, let me help you. Before Jay could argue, he popped the lid on some chili powder and tapped in a few shakes. There you go, he said. I wish you had asked, she said. I'm a chef. You're still just an assistant, he said. You should be grateful for my help. Of course, Jay said, not wanting to waste time on an argument. Thank you. He walked away, and Jay hurried to take a taste of her soup. Immediately, she was hit with a punch of chili that seemed to overpower her other flavors. She started to panic a little. This dish had to be perfect. She had to fix this. Something wrong? asked Yvette, another one of the established chefs. You're working on your dish for chef tonight, right? It's fine, Jay grumped. Albert tried to help and he added too much chili powder. Now I have to figure out how to balance my soup again. May I have a taste? asked Yvette. Maybe I can give some advice. Jay grabbed her a spoon and the chef took a taste of the bubbling sausage soup. Whoa, she said. Definitely too much chili. I can fix it for you, though. Wait right here. She stepped to the fridge and came back with some heavy cream. Are you sure? Jay asked. Part of her wanted to tell Yvette to stop, but she was too nervous about fixing her soup to dare. Of course! Here we are! Yvette said, adding a liberal amount of cream to the broth. Should be good as new. Good luck! She walked away back to her station. As soon as she was gone, Jay took another big bite of her soup and felt her heart sink. The cream had cut some heat, but it had totally changed the texture of her broth. It was starting to lean more towards a chowder. And who had ever heard of a sausage chowder? Jay looked at the clock. More than an hour had already passed, and she didn't have time to start over. She would have to fix this mess, but she had no idea how. So she went to ask one of the other chefs for help. It was a busy night, and the kitchen was bustling with people, but she managed to grab a young chef named Peter, who had helped to train her. Pete, she said, Albert and Yvette tried to help with my dish for chef, and now it's all out of whack. Can you please help me fix it? Yeah, sure, Peter said, passing off his chopping to one of the assistants. He followed Jay back to the pot and took a quick taste. I see the issue. Too much sausage in the chowder. Jay nearly fell over. It's not a chowder. It's a soup. What do I do? Peter blushed, seeing he'd upset her. Well, it'll be okay. Just uh, lean into the chowder, maybe? Add some corn, a little red pepper, and it's a sausage corn chowder. Whoop, gotta get back to my station. Thanks, Jay called after him. Okay, she said to herself. I can do this. Let's lean into the chowder. We can pass this test. She added the corn and the pepper, but it didn't go with the spinach well. So she added some potatoes to round it out. When that didn't work, she must have looked desperate because the other chefs in the kitchen started to come and try to help. First, they thought it was complicated, so she could thin it out by adding some more chicken broth. And that sounded okay. But then they added some octopus, too, saying it had all the right notes for a seafood bisque. The next chef thought it was too fishy and added ketchup. Jay tasted her sausage chili soup corn chowder seafood bisque and almost had to spit it out. She was near tears now. How could she fix this for Chef Plath? Well, the other chefs saw her nearly losing it, so of course they all came to help a little more. Before Jay knew it, 
She had a sausage chili soup, corn chowder, seafood bisque, spicy snail, pineapple upside down cake, salsa verde, carbonara, sweet and sour gumbo, and a terrible sinking feeling in her chest. When the two-hour alarm finally went off, she poured a bowl without daring to taste it. Knowing that it wasn't going to pass and that she had messed everything up, she sat the bowl in front of Chef Plath without comment. A soup? An interesting choice, he said, picking up the deep belly spoon. Does it have a name? Sausage, chili soup, corn, chowder, seafood, bisque, spicy snail, pineapple, upside down cake, salsa verde, carbonara, sweet and sour gumbo was what she wanted to say. But instead, she just said, I haven't named it yet. Chef took a heaping spoonful, eyeing the strange colors and random ingredients, and then took a big bite. And he smiled and then squinted and coughed and spluttered and puckered his mouth and winced and finally, with great effort, swallowed. That was not good, he said. Jay wanted to cry, but she made herself hold it in, at least until she was alone. I'm sorry, chef, she said. May I go? She turned to leave. Jay, wait, chef said. You are one of my most talented young assistants and will surely be a great chef. But what happened here? Well, I was nervous about my soup. It was a sausage soup originally, and I asked for the opinions of the other chefs. One said spicier, one said milder, one wanted cream, and another suggested fish, and it just kind of got out of hand from there. Chef Plath smiled and shook his head. Ah, we've all been there he said. Listen, they say too many chefs will spoil the soup. Have you heard that? Jay shook her head no. It's good to look for guidance, but people have different opinions, especially about taste. Food is subjective. Art is subjective. And if you try to take everyone's advice to make them all happy, you end up with... He gestured at the bowl. Sausage, chili soup, corn chowder, seafood bisque, spicy snail, pineapple upside down cake, salsa verde, carbonara, sweet and sour gumbo, Jay said. And Chef laughed. Exactly. Your original soup sounded wonderful. I would have liked to try it. Jay nodded sadly, and then sh- and then she snapped up. One second, okay? Chef nodded, confused. Jay ran back to her station and looked through all the ingredients And there, she found the bowl of her original sausage soup that she had set aside to cool. She brought it back up to temperature, poured it into a nicer bowl, and added a little fresh parmesan on the top. A moment later, it was steaming on Chef's desk. And what is this? he asked. This is my family famous sausage soup, she said. I had put aside a bowl to taste before everything got crazy. Chef nodded, picked up a fresh spoon, and took a big scoop. The spoon glistened with sausage and tomato and spinach and fennel seeds, an intoxicating aroma filling the air. He took a big bite, and then another, and another, and soon the whole bowl was empty, and he sent Jay to bring him a bit of bread to mop up the juices. So, what do you think? Jay asked when she couldn't stand to wait any longer. I think, Chef Plath said, tidily wiping his mouth with a linen napkin, that you're my new chef. Starting tomorrow. Tonight, I'd like you to make another big batch of this soup for the kitchen staff. And this time, do it your way. Yes, chef, Jay said with a smile. And then she went out back behind the kitchen and screamed out, Yes, yes, yes! To herself about a thousand times. And then she made another big batch of soup. And when she shared it around with the staff later that night, it was nothing but smiles. And everyone agreed they wouldn't change a thing. The End Thanks for listening.